Father, we want to give thanks and praise to your holy name. As we continue to witness your rising from the dead and giving us victory over sin and death, we want to thank you, loving Father, even for this morning that you've given to each one of us to wake up and to behold the day. As you give us that opportunity, Father, we invite you, even as we listen to you talking to us, your word of love, your word of mercy, your word of grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, <coughs> my listeners and uh, viewers in different platforms. I want to give thanks to God uh, this morning for giving me the opportunity to come and uh, share with you the word of God. I want to thank your minister, Reverend Harun Gero, Gere and uh, the session for inviting me to this pulpit this morning. I bring greetings to you from my friend and my companion, my wife. And also, I want to say that I'm privileged to be with you today. So, so that uh, we uh, can be blessed together by our Lord Jesus Christ who called us and who calls us. We are going to share together a very important uh, topic which will be close to the theme of you are following of restoration. A valued companion. A companion is one who accompanies another on a journey or is one closely connected to someone. A companion is a person that uh, you will turn to when uh, things uh, need to be taken attention of. The two texts we have read this morning can be seen in different ways. But I want to see them from a companion point of view. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 34, is a very familiar story of two people who followed Jesus, but uh, when he was crucified and uh, was buried, they were left with nobody to follow or to companion if we have to use the term. And therefore, on their way, they were discussing with worries and with fears, even from those who crucified uh, Jesus, of the things that had happened in Jerusalem. And as they were walking, then they were accompanied by a person who was bold enough 
to start talking to them. And this person, when he caught up with them, he decided to engage them. And say, I see you are so concerned and you are discussing maybe something very serious. What is this that you are talking about or discussing? And one of them, known as Cleopas, probably turned to face him. They stood and he asked him, are you or are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Or made a statement as it is written, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. And uh, this stranger, who they did not know, who they were confident talking to, asked them what things. And they narrated their story as to what happened in Jerusalem. A person called Jesus, arrested, sentenced, and crucified. What they did not say, and we were very afraid, so we hid ourselves. And even now, we are afraid. I consider these people, first of all, they needed someone to talk to about these concerns. And this is why they did not mind about this stranger. And they decided to confide in him. So they invited him to be a new companion on their way. And this companion, since he was trusted, decided, okay, let me see whether I can help you. And he unpacked what probably they knew, but they had forgotten. What was said about this man they are talking about who was crucified was spoken of by Moses, by the prophets, and indeed this person they are talking about was with them. So he proved to be very useful. Unpacking the scriptures and letting them know that he did something, he knows something about what their concerns were. What is important here in this story is what happened when they went in for a night. But let's see before. Jesus joined them, and he was going his way. So when they got to a place where they wanted to, to turn to their home, he seemed like he was going on. They would not allow him to go. They said, it is night. The day is spent. Why don't you come in? And they stay with us over the night. That's confidence. That's confidence. So he, uh, he turned in, he went in, he sat with them, and a meal was uh, put before them. And he took the bread and he blessed it. And he gave it to them. And uh, their eyes were opened. They saw clearly now, oh, this is the man that we have been talking about. This is the man that we knew. Uh, we knew. They were quite surprised because of this. 
a ticket that they were in darkness of fear, of worries of many things. But what he did brought light into their existence. They did not sleep. They decided to go back to Jerusalem and they talk about this valued companion who has been with them without their knowing. And they went to the eleven and said, He has risen. He has appeared to us on the road. We did not recognize him. He went in with us. We did not recognize either. He broke bread and we recognized him. I'm sure they said it was good that we begged him to stay so that he could open our mind. He could open our eyes. He could open our hearts to see things differently. Life is a long, tedious, and a stormy journey. It is full of ups and downs. It is like a ship in the sea with the wind and the storms, or a bumpy road with sometimes lots of potholes and treacherous, dangerous things that. Uh, happen on the road. And when you walk it, it can be difficult. A journey can be lonely and distressing when traveled alone. And the one would wish that he had or she had a companion to turn to to talk to, to cry to when needs arise. Yes, the disciples rowing on the boat wanted a companion to turn to when the storms were there and Jesus was already there. These two needed someone to unpack as they did. As it uh, has happened to them. Therefore, human company is always cherished, but it is rather short, it is rather temporary. Mark's story tells us that Jesus was asleep, therefore, he was no, not much of a good companion when asleep. In the story also of Luke, the stranger was going on his way, caught up with them, and they started talking. But as soon he was going to part and go his way. On Friday, we listened to the death of Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, who died after 99 years of living. What they said is that uh, he was a royal companion for Queen Elizabeth. But for how long? Only 99 years, and the journey was temporary. So it came to an end. Listen to this. Genesis chapter 3, Verse 9, God wanted to have company with humanity. And he would come and visit Adam and Eve in the garden and they ask, where are you? In Exodus 29, 45 to 46, we hear God trying to assure 
the children of Israel. That he want to be with them. He want to live with them. He want to live among them. And this is what he says. Then I will live among the people of Israel and they be their God and they will know that I am the Lord their God. I am the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that I could live among them. I am the Lord, their God. You see, a companion. It's not one who is going to come and go, but one who wants to live with you. And that is God. Again, Exodus 3.15, Moses, valuing the companionship of God, said, if your presence don't go with us personally, do not let us move a step from here. Again, showing the value. Jeremiah, that the one that the three also shows the value of a, this kind of a companion. This is the covenant I will make with the, uh, the house of Israel after that time. I will put my law into their minds and write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So he is there. He is someone who they can turn to at any time they need. Again, our story of Mark. The Disciples were in peril. If Jesus was not there, life would have been very, very difficult. But indeed, they felt secure that he was with them, and he too was secure, and he slept. But they knew, as long as he's there, there is nothing to fear. This is why things, when things were difficult, they turned to him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we perish or drown? Our story again, you must be a stranger in this town who has not heard. Don't you understand what has been happening? So they are talking to someone who is there with them. So when storms hit, the disciples needed Jesus. When confusion was in the air, the apostles needed a companion to open their eyes. Easter weekend has two things that happened the death, the burial, and seemingly the resurrection. I want to ask this, where were you on Good Friday? What did you do? How about Sunday? Since you did not go to church, what happened? Did you sleep? Did you wonder what will happen since you can't celebrate the rising of the sun or God? What did you do? I have a few possibilities here. Maybe some of us, nothing happened because something happens when we go to church. Maybe some of us, <coughs> they just left Jesus when he got arrested or when he was crucified because they did not want to be bothered. They did not want to get in trouble. Maybe some of us were as confused as Cleopas and his friend by what had happened. Maybe some of us 
like the women, who are going to perform the traditional rituals of putting flowers and uh, ointment and so on to the dead body. And maybe, like Peter and John, some of us did not believe. John, Peter and John did not believe the story of women that Jesus is risen. Isn't it the same? We have COVID-19. We are told about the vaccine, which has been probably very quickly put together, but aren't we the same doubters, not believing? Christian life may have many blind spots or thick storms. We need someone whom we can trust to walk with us. We need someone we can turn to, like disciples did. We need someone who can open our eyes. Jesus was, is, and will always be there if we need him to be our valued companion in our spiritual journey of life. We need him to calm the storms of our lives. We need him to deal with our blindness. We need him to open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to our eternal destiny, eternal, eternal life. We cannot do without a companion. Jesus Christ, we need him. Do you live alone? Do you walk alone? Do you work alone? If you do, life can be difficult and dangerous. You need a friend, your wife, your husband, your father, your mother, a friend, a companion. People who are traveling in a plane and they were caught in a storm. Very serious storm that was going to break the plane. And the people were frantic, screaming all over, and the pilot told them to be calm because he was trying to do whatever he could. There was a little girl sitting next to a pastor like me. She did not seem to know that there was time. She was not worried. God was with the pirates, so the plane landed safely through the storm. And the pastor sought to understand this little girl. Why so calm, not worried, not afraid? The girl looked at him and said, the pirate is my daddy, and he is taking me home. In other words, daddy, as a controls, there is nothing to fear. If you have daddy, God, as your friend, if you have placed your confidence in God on your life's journey, there will be nothing to fear because he's such a valued friend, valued companion. Make God your daddy on your journey and he will weather all the storms of life and take you home. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Thank you very much, Mchugaji, Mwarimu, Dr. Kemani Chege, our valued speaker for the day, for a powerful word about a valued companion. Are you there? Are you following this service from wherever you are and you need a valued companion? Are you there? You can make Jesus Christ your valued companion, even now. All you need to do is to rise up if you are sitting down. All raise up your hand and our minister will pray even he continues with his altar call. Mali. God said, I want to come to you because I hear your cry. But you got to respond in kind by showing that you need him. The children of Israel cried and he came. We have cried and Jesus came. Do you have any concern like the travelers on the road, like the men on the boat. Jesus is ready, turn to him, and he will answer your call. He will answer your fears. I want to pray with those who may need God to be their companion this morning. If you are there, make a step of faith, stand, and we will pray together. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, we can't do without you. For your God of all circumstances, your God of all situations, your God of the day, your God of the night, your God in the storms of sicknesses, your God in the storms of lack of money, lack of jobs, lack of uh, businesses that go bad, relationships that go sour, your God who understands our situations in every way. We need you as our companion so that we can turn to you at any moment we need you. There are some of us who are standing to say, Lord, come in and be my companion on this journey. Lord, hear them and answer them, and bless their lives, and provide for their needs. We lift them to you as we lift ourselves to you in this service. You have spoken to us, O oh Father. We respond to you in giving you all the glory, O oh honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.